Welcome back. Union leaders aren't pleased with the outcome of Monday's meeting with the Prime Minister, but Dr. Hubert Minnis seems to think it was very informative, adding that the information he's gathered will now be transferred to the Minister of Labor and he'll meet with the relevant unions to deal with these issues. Some of the problems go way back 15 years, you know, I wasn't even here. That's right. <laughs> and then I'm sad with 15 years of problems, but so be it, you know, we had a cap, so my Labour Minister had asked him to do it. And then they had other concerns with respect to boards and agencies, how they were functioning. And um, I will ask the relevant ministers to speak to their chairmen of the various boards so that you can have better communication between the boards and the, um, the unions and the boards and the employees. But union heads say a straight face to Prime Minister gave no concrete information and no timelines were set. President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Belinda Wilson, agreed, adding that the Prime Minister didn't commit to anything. Still, when asked if he's worried of a national strike considering the country's dismal labor climate, the Prime Minister gave reporters this response. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm more worried about other matters. I'm, I'm more worried right now and concerned whether the Saxon's going to win jump on Christmas. <laughs> but that's what I'm gearing up for. Meantime, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands this morning acknowledging that there is no benefit at all in the back and forth tip for tat, which, as you're aware, has led to senior doctors taking strike action, which is now stretched into a week. If you think about it, this cannot continue indefinitely. There has to be resolution. And so we look forward to that resolution. I think uh, certainly the president would have said uh, that he saw some improvement or some progress. The CPSA strike action has forced authorities to activate PMH's emergency operations center. While nurses today voting in a strike poll to determine how many of them are prepared to take action if necessary, our news team spoke with Bahamas Nurses of Union President Amantia Williams ahead of polls closing. Well, we have seen a number of nurses came out and to exercise their rights today. So we say thank you to all the nurses, and we know that the poll is still open until 5. So we're asking you to go out and exercise your rights. Say yes. And um, we're hoping to get a, as soon as this poll is closed at 5 p.m. and 48 hours, we're hoping to get a strike certificate in our hands. It will not be as it was the last time. The union president says there's no fear that what happened last time will reoccur, as this time all precautionary measures were taken. We've taken precautions. We've ensured um, all the family island administrators got the um, ballot and the listing. We've ensured that the director of local government was informed. We ensured that all labor um, departments in the various family islands were notified a, almost a week ago. While the Prime Minister this morning bringing the keynote address to the Caribbean Infrastructure Forum, or CARIF, the forum's aimed at promoting discussion, interaction and exchange of ideas with dynamic and structured discussion. The Prime Minister says the Bahamas has always acknowledged the strong multiple role and social benefits that investments in public works, utilities and transport facilities bring. Another very known fact is that our geographic location exposes us to major threats from weather related events such as hurricanes, placing at risk both our economic activity and public infrastructure. Studies have shown that the Bahamas is one of the top 10 nations at great risk and vulnerability to rising sea levels, giving our geographical features as <coughs> the low lying sea encircled the country. And this potential threat to our way of life and key tourism assets from the projected sea level rise is, to say the least, the government, he said, has embarked on several police-oriented initiatives to further address this issue to better position the public sector in the event the country is faced with another natural disaster. The government recently obtained $55 million loan from the IE. And these funds are earmarked for building Bahamas' resilience to coastal risk through sustainable coastal protection, including natural infrastructure and integrated management of the coast. In recognition of the Bahamas' infrastructure challenges and needs, the government has embarked on several important policy-oriented initiatives. 
needs and build economic resilience. The forum will continue tomorrow addressing topics like liquid nitrogen gas, shifting the urban management paradigm and developing cost-effective connectivity. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.